everybody welcome to another ride along with goggles and uh look at that scenery wow we are I'll show you real quick on the map but we do have to get going because it's a long trip we're here on that park road between uh, fort collins and steamboat springs we got to get on down here to the highway this is going to be downhill from this point on and we're going to get on this four lane and boogie and then get up here to bushnell so got uh, it's quite a trip 440 miles which is long for a video so but there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of stuff i want to go over with you on this thing Ooh, we're rolling away and uh yeah so we got to get on it uh we should have that axle down on the truck It's a driver 47 construction site, Kiwood, of course. Pretty cool location. Now we gotta see what the steering's like here. I added a little bit of weight to it. slow getting out of here but once we get to the the big road we're gonna have to let her rip so steering's pretty good uh the truck i went and weighed the truck so i put now i didn't weigh it with no load in the back uh not sure what that would be we have to try i'd have to try it but Run a little short on time today, as, yeah, as usual. <laughs> um, so um, the truck weight, I took it and weighed the truck. I got gravel in it. It weighs a uh, tick under 72,000 pounds. Check with Recon to see what the GBW would be on a five axle. And uh, he says uh, one that he's uh, driven and drives is um, 73,000 pounds. So, so loading's pretty quick, pretty close here. So then I went and weighed it with the trailer on, empty. I got the 32-foot trailer, and it was 79,000. So he's got the trailer at about uh, 7,000 pounds. I wonder if that's a little light. I don't know. I guess could be what it is. It's, it's four axles, so axles and brakes and everything are always kind of heavy but then again they're not that they're not the same size they're not uh, sizes of a semi-trailer oh good we get to just blow right out of the park here not gonna slow down we gotta get out of here it's not too long to go now in the park catching that guy up front of us so I did put a little weight on the uh, steer axle of the truck and maybe I didn't need to but the cargo isn't super heavy 45,000 not like the uh, 61 we had the other day so in all fair fairness to uh, Salonik I'm gonna have to try it with his settings although when you go in and look at the truck in the mod, it's got 5,000 kilograms on the front axle. I think the uh, loaded here with the big tires we've got on here, 
I think you'd be allowed 7,700 kilograms. So it's still a little light, so I could knock it back to 7,700, make it realistic. That would be a thing a guy could do. Here comes the big road. Well, it's still two lane, but our parts are going to be four lane and it's uh, pretty. And theoretically, we're going downhill, I hope. Stop there. So this load is 45. We're at 79. So 124,000. That's enough to be getting down the road. Got the four, uh, comes 444 from, um, Creech Bomb in here. Yeah, I had to turn up the brakes. They were, uh, Pretty low. Boy. I say it's no rocket sled. I got uh, three forty two gears in it. Hoping we're going to be able to put them to work once we get on the highway. I'm going to put the brakes to the test down here. There is a few hairpins. Let's check out how I. Jake does something. Oh no, we're going uphill. Oh shoot. road for that trailer. <laughs> well, it must not be watching the fuel economy gauge. So like I say, what I'll do is I'll, I will put the uh, front axle weight back to where Salonik has it and see what happens and I'll get a heavy load on it. I saw there was a, uh, what was it? Was it a Volvo excavator? You can get on here, it's at 66,000. So I'll do a little testing on that. See what it gives. And if you, you know, is it just good right out of the box? That'd be good to know. And if not, you know, I'll put the, uh, 
Yeah, it's driving pretty good right here, but we, we've only got uh, 40, what have we got? 45, 200. So, um, but it is driving really well. So I would imagine that we may be able to just try going with the legal weight on the front axle. Make it 7,700 for, for Canada and try it. And I think that's probably applicable in the States too. And that's providing you got the, the floats on the front, the big, uh, the 12 and a quarter rims. Also tested this trailer out a little bit earlier with Pinka's uh, dump truck, uh, his 389 dump version, and uh, it, uh, he uh, there's no changes made there, of course. So you do need to add weight with it, as we saw in a video last week, I believe. And so what I've done there is oh, so yeah. I'm probably going to put out a little tutorial soon, if I get a chance, this week for sure. That will, uh, oh, oh. What's going on here? Uh, so anyway, um, that'll show you how to do add weight to the front axle on Pingas and this one. This one's decidedly easier. Pinkus truck, you've got to... The open depth comes as a compressed zip file. So what you got to do is extract the file. Not, not extract, you know, do the, not that extract here thing, but the option above it on 7-zip. That's... Um, just allows you to unzip it as a hole and then you can drill into it once it's unzipped and then use notepad or notepad plus plus edit it the way you see fit you know put some weight on the front axle and then you just uh, zip it back up as a .scs. So when you go into 7, 7 zip and you go add the file to archive, just change it to uh, instead of a .zip, just make it a uh, just change the extension to .scs. traffic will allow us to and 
did, um, so for the truck, the uh, SCS paint, you know, or sorry, any of the steam paint jobs I did for this truck that are current will work on it. I imagine recons will too. And anybody else's. But that, uh, that stripe misalignment is there. There's not much you can do about it. So I just put the elephant ears on in front of the air cleaners, the hose guards or whatever you want to call them. Those things right there. And it kind of hides the jog, in this case anyway, more or less. So, boy, another hot day here. It's uh, 32 Celsius out. And we're going to have a little break, uh, I think, over the next three days, and then it's going to go back to 30, 31, 32 for a while. So I was able to get out in the garage this morning and got a fair bit done. Got the... Uh, Serpentine belt adapter plate I made all cleaned up and painted up and the front of the engine is definitely all cleared up where it needs to be ready to install I just got to go get that uh, higher quality gray, uh, threaded rod that I want to do to change how I'm mounting everything instead of bolts I want to use studs I'll, I'll take some photos and show you guys what that's all about because it's a little bit weird. It's a one-off thing. And um, now yeah, we get that all sorted out. Really looking forward to having that thing going again. Jeez. Getting tired of driving that little Miata around. Start back there, they don't get much love. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. This said, look at the map. GPS just has us going off and right back on. Goofy. Oh, a scale coming up though. Oh, darn it. Oh, got the wave around. Be 124,000 if it adds all the weights up properly. Yeah, I gotta take side to a medical appointment tomorrow. It's uh, a three hour one. So I'll drop Psy off and then I'm going to go and see if I can't find that uh, threaded rod I need. Like I said, I tried stainless and oh my god, that stuff was scary. Kind of like butter. 
the stretching and twisting and over the length that I was needing it to work and it ain't gonna happen. I don't know if I'll be able to get grade eight, but I think I can get higher tensile steel. So you get that cheap galvanized stuff you can get at most hardware stores. I don't want that because it's always loose. Like those things, like you spin a nut on it and it's not got that nice precision feel to it. It's uh, just rolled thread. Or they, you know, been poorly rolled at that. And uh, I think they purposely make it loose, I think. I'm not sure. But I need uh, something, you know, something that's close to bolt quality. So I see there's like McMaster Car and various places around town and they all have a gold anodized high tensile strength version. But the nut and bolt place I go to generally, it's a holiday here on Monday. In Canada and the US, I believe. So there's no going down to a store to get it today. So I'll wheel over there and if they have grade eight, I'll get it just because it'll be more precise and it'll more accurately when you you know making like five inch long studs out of it and the more accurate the thread is the better position it's going to be in the hole and everything coming out and lining up nicely because they're going to want to have between four and six of them sticking out of the front of the block to slide stuff onto and if they're pointing all over the place at five inches long you may not get stuff on or you intend to get all of those through the uh, holes in the plate at the same time So this is the uh, Goggles 56 paint chrome skin. Just threw it on here to see how that would look on a dump truck. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty fancy. Sure looks good. Pretty aggressive tread on those tires.
so we're going to that uh, big bush knoll uh, out here, halfway between uh, Burlington and, and uh, Sterling. That really, really, really big feedlot. Do too terrible on time for such a you know it's a long trip, but uh, we're gonna be hanging left up here fairly soon. of Toro's making service trucks for the various tractor brands and CAT to put in the ATS expansion map. So that's kind of cool. That'd be like John Deere and Case and various service trucks. Pretty neat. That'd be cool to see the cat ones on the construction sites and John Deere and Case ones at the farms. Imagine that's how it's going to play out. So there's a Jasper's wheels on the truck, and uh, got the 12 and a quarters on the front, 22.5 by 12 and a quarter. Now, well, as far as I can see. Try and get a photo here. You just see cattle as far as way in the background there. Don't have a very uh, don't have the chase cam improvement in here or working. I guess one of the two. So we're going to drop off the loader and drop off the gravel and spread it around, I guess. All right, where do you need it? Up against the shed. It's kind of hard to unload it.
Miller steers really quick. You gotta be on it. That video wasn't too terribly long. Uh, but yeah, it was a really nice drive. Truck's driving really well. Like, uh, definitely going to have to try it with... Uh, go back to Salonix settings and see what the difference is. Uh, see how it is. If just that weight he put on the chassis alone is enough to make it steer, I don't know. Like, with the load on it. Be good to know. Man, it'd be cool if you could weigh them axle by axle. <laughs> that would be pretty illuminating. Anyway, uh, really appreciate you guys following along, as always. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care and bye for now.